Hi, I'm Mike with the School of Self-Reliance. Today we're going to do out in my backyard, I'm not in the deep dark woods or anything, but today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about fire kits. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that I hate <clears throat> is going in the woods and being cold. And one of the surest ways that you can keep from being cold is to have a good fire kit. And what we're going to do is talk about some of the, uh, the ways that you can put together a good fire kit. All right, we'll talk about some of the components in the fire kit. One of the things that I do is I take a little Altoids tin, and I paint it this one green. Of course, you don't have to. I just did it for camouflage purposes. And inside the Altoids kit, I've got a little bit of dryer lint. Dryer lint makes some of the best fire tinder in the world, and it's cheap. Uh, believe me, you've lost enough socks in your dryer that uh, you've got plenty of dryer lint. You know, every load you clean out the filter, and uh, right there it is. So it's free, it's easy, and you can get as much of it as you want. So I carry a little bit, about that much. I do like natural tinders, and natural tinders to me are always best, and when I'm in the woods I do try uh, to only use natural tinders. Uh, one of the reasons that I carry this though is because you never know really really wet conditions or a bad emergency a hunting accident while you're out in the field uh, a Little bit of tinder may save your life get that fire going a little easier for you uh, Of course everybody's seen me use one of these, you know, it's a ferro rod and Throws a really great spark. We've talked about this before uh, You know, it's a few thousand degrees uh, a little over 3,000 I think you know the sparks that hit and uh, that's something that I stick in my, my kit. One of the reasons it, it works wet or dry, it's old technology, but it's great technology because, like I said, it works wet or dry, and you get about 12,000 strikes on one of those. I like the Proforce variety. Uh, you know, I like good quality uh, ferro rods. One of the other things that I carry is a U.S. military magnesium bar. It's got a ferro rod on the back, it's got magnesium that you shave off with your knife, and I'll show you that in another video, but uh, the magnesium works wet or dry, you know, it doesn't matter, temperature doesn't matter to it, uh, you can ignite this stuff while it's sitting, you know, in, in water, so I mean, even if there's raindrops hitting it, it will ignite, uh, so that's another reason why I carry that. I also carry a small Forenza lens. You know, seems a little Boy Scout, but in, in all honesty, I want as many opportunities to make fire as humanly possible in my kit without truly overloading it. And you can get these out of some survival kits. This one came out of a Topps knife survival kit, and Topps actually sells a survival kit that you can buy. But the little Forenza lens, of course I carry a waterproof match container. You've heard me talk about this before. And I put Strike Anywhere matches in it. Uh, some people like to use lifeboat matches or other matches. I like Strike Anywhere because I don't need a striker. And if you get the striker wet for any other matches, your matches are done. You're not going to light them. Um, where these, they come with their own striker built in. Uh, and you can get them online or you can get them at most of your hardware stores. Uh, most grocery stores don't sell them anymore. But the container has another ferro rod on the back of it you know, little bitty one embedded in it and glued to it. So it gives you yet another opportunity to make fire. And like I said, I like as many opportunities to create flame or spark as humanly possible. And this is just another example of that. I do carry a Bic. Um, you know, there's, there's no beating a Bic because, well, if you put it in your kit and as long as nothing happens to it, uh, the fluid stays in there and it gives you flame each and every single time. Uh, but if the button gets depressed while it's in your kit, it'll sit and leak the fuel off and you may find when you strike it that there's no flame. So I do carry the Bic, cheap, easy to come by. And then I carry one of two metal lighters. I carry either a Zippo which this one's always in my pocket. I'm a smoker, so, you know, I've always got my Zippo in my pocket. And this one is a German design, Emco. And I've got a friend who really likes the Emco over the Zippo. 
Personally, I don't care which one you carry, but I highly recommend carrying one of either one of them. The reason is, is because these are wick and flint lighters. They will burn off of the fuel that's made for them, or they will burn off of rubbing alcohol, lamp oil, you can get them to burn on diesel fuel, Jack Daniels, denatured alcohol, mineral spirits. You can always refuel this. and You can even boil down some tur and make some turpentine in the field that will power these. And you can make it off a of pine tree sap. Uh, I'll do a video on that later. Uh, but you, you can. And as long as you have flints right here in the handle, you know, in the bottom, you lift up the, uh, the cotton batting. And I've got some flints in there. I've also got a wick shoved down in there. Now, that wick will last a long time, and you can change it in the field. This lighter is old technology, and it comes from an era when things were meant to be serviced, when you were meant to repair them, not throw them away. And I carry it because it works, and because I can use a multitude of fuels in it. Uh, I'm not limited to just one thing, and I can always refill it. I can't refill this when it's gone. Once it's done, it's done. It's just junk. But either one of these lighters, and you can refill them. If the wick burns out, you carry more wicks. You just put a new one in it. Um, and again, you know, if you need to, you can use alcohol and diesel fuel to power this. Uh, white gas for a Coleman lantern, but you don't want to use gasoline because you're going to cause an explosion. The uh, the chamber will rupture in here and you'll you'll blow up. Um, the Emco is a nice lighter. Flame comes out here. It's got a vent so that you can adjust the height of your flame. But it has one other curious feature that my buddy really likes, which is that the whole compartment comes out and it will burn and you can use this as a candle. You can direct the flame where you need it to go in order to uh, uh, light a fire more effectively or put the flame where you want. Now they won't burn indefinitely just sitting there. If you leave them sit like this burning, uh, after about five to 10 minutes, uh, they'll pop apart because the heat will build up and you'll build pressure in the chamber. But, again, it's a nice lighter. Flints are easily replaced. Multitude of different fuels that can be used in it. Pretty much anything that will burn will, will work in this lighter. <laughs> and to me, that's an advantage that, uh, that you can't get from much of anything else. Also, they're durable. They're all made of steel and they're just nice lighters. I also carry some natural tinder in my fire kit. This, probably everybody will recognize it, is birch bark. And birch bark has flammable oils inside of it. And those flammable oils will burn wet or dry. So it's a nice tinder to carry, and this stuff just burns profusely. On one of my last videos, and on the intro to this video, you see me lighting, uh, at one point in one of my videos, you see me light this stuff and it just burns. It burns like gas. And that's, you know, and, and it will get you flame very, very quickly. Um, I do like to carry, you know, a little Ziploc bag in my fire kit. Keep the tinder dry, you know, squeeze the air out of it. And it also gives me, when I'm gathering tinder in the woods, and uh, when I'm out in the woods, I gather tinder all the time, whether I need it or not. You know, don't just try to gather it when you need a fire. Gather it before you need a fire. When you see it, gather it up. And the Ziploc bag just gives me a place to store it uh, so that it's not loose and, and falling all over the place. Some people like to carry their fire kit inside their cook gear, which certainly works. You know, it's a nice empty cavity that you can get everything in and it will all fit in here. You know, of course, you can pack it with some more uh, material to keep it from rattling, but it will all fit in there and fold up to a nice little container. One of the other things that, uh, that isn't too bad to carry is Vaseline or uh, paraffin wax. And this video is not meant to be an all-inclusive fire kit video. It's just meant to get you thinking about fire. Because if it's cold or wet outside, the one thing that you need most, other than shelter, is fire. You're going to have to have it. And me, I don't like to be cold. I don't like to spend cold nights in the woods, so I carry as many opportunities as humanly possible. Me, I carry my fire kit 
in my survival kit. Um, you know, I just take the pieces, shove them into my little survival kit. And then I've got a fire kit ready to go. It's just in with my other survival items. I usually attach it to my backpack. And it's just there ready to go, along with my other survival items. <coughs> um, forgot to put a couple things in. Um, but think about your fire kit. Make sure that you've thought it through. Make sure that you're carrying enough stuff. And as far as the natural tenders, if you want to carry some of them, remember when you're out in the woods, even though you're not going to spend the night and you see a birch tree, there's no reason not to strip off a little bit of birch bark. Uh, if you see some seed pods or something that make good tinder, go ahead and strip them off right there. Uh, pack them into your little Ziploc bag, put them in your fire kit later when you get home. Um, you know, don't pass up the opportunities for that. Uh, plus the birch bark, it's out there in nature. Uh, you can also use uh, bark from cedar trees. If you strip off the bark from cedars, uh, which are even more common than birch, there's lots of flammable resins and oils in there, and the cedar wood itself is also very flammable. So small shavings of that. And if you're out in the woods and you see these things, they're just out there, go ahead and gather them. They're free. You're already there. You don't have to go down to the store and buy any. Um, but it's something to think about. Uh, get your fire kit together. You don't want to be cold. It's your lifeline in a cold or wet environment, especially a cold and wet environment. Uh, so think about your fire kit, put it together, be prepared. Again, I'm Mike with the School of Self-Reliance. If you like what we do, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our channel, share our videos. Thanks a lot. ...is to have a good fire kit. And what we're going to do is talk about some of the, uh, the ways that you can put together a good fire kit. All right, we'll talk about some of the components in the fire kit. One of the things that I do is I take a little Altoids tin and I paint it this one green. Of course, you don't have to. I just did it for camouflage purposes. And inside the Altoids kit, I've got a little bit of dryer lint. Dryer lint makes some of the best fire tinder in the world and it's cheap. Uh, believe me, you've lost enough socks in your dryer that uh, you've got plenty of dryer lint. You know, every load you clean out the filter and uh, right there it is. So it's free, it's easy, and you can get as much of it as you want. So I carry a little bit, about that much. I do like natural, I want as many opportunities to make fire as humanly possible in my kit without truly overloading it. And you can get these out of some survival kits. This one came out of a Topps knife survival kit, and Topps actually sells a survival kit that you can buy. But the little Forenza lens. And of course, I carry a waterproof match container. You've heard me talk about this before. And I put Strike Anywhere matches in it. Uh, some people like to use lifeboat matches or other matches. I like Strike Anywhere because I don't need a striker. And if you get the striker wet, for any other matches, your matches are done. You're not going to light them. Um, where these, they come with their own striker built in. Uh, and you can get them online or you can get them at most of your hardware stores. Uh, most grocery stores don't sell them anymore. But the container has another ferrule rod on the back of it. You know, it's on one of those. I like the Proforce variety. Uh, you know, I like good quality uh, ferrule rods. One of the other things that I carry is a U.S. military magnesium bar. It's got a ferrule rod on the back. It's got magnesium that you shave off with your knife and I'll show you that in another video. But uh, the magnesium works wet or dry. You know, it doesn't matter. Temperature doesn't matter to it. Uh, you can ignite this stuff while it's sitting, you know, in, in water. So, I mean, even if there's raindrops hitting it, it will ignite. Uh, so that's another reason why I carry that. I also carry a small Forenza lens. You know, seems a little Boy Scout, but in in all honesty, tenders and natural tenders to me are always best. And when I'm in the woods, I do try uh, to only use natural tenders. 
one of the reasons that I carry this though is because you never know really really wet conditions or a bad emergency a hunting accident while you're out in the field a uh, little bit of tinder may save your life get that fire going a little easier for you uh, of course everybody's seen me use one of these you know it's a ferro rod and throws a really great spark we've talked about this before uh, you know it's a few thousand degrees uh, a little over 3,000 I think you know the sparks that hit and uh, that's something that I stick in my my kit one of the reasons it, it works wet or dry it's old technology but it's great technology because like I said it works wet or dry and you get about 12,000 strikes I'm Mike with the School of Self-Reliance. Today we're going to do out in my backyard, I'm not in the deep dark woods or anything, but today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about fire kits. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I hate <clears throat> is going in the woods and being cold. And one of the surest ways that you can keep from being cold 